Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me good? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hope you are doing great. <laughs> Welcome, madam. Thank you, ma'am. Thanks for having me again here. Oh, you have been associated with us for the past uh, six programs. That's great to hear. <laughs> I yeah. actually didn't realize <laughs> it has been an wonderful journey. Thanks for that. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, on behalf of School of Commerce, Bharatiya University, mm -hmm. as well as Rusa Digital Team, I welcome you again, Madam, for the Rusa Phase Six, which means last phase of the first slot of Rusa project. Mm -hmm. Our journey will go further, but uh, this is the Phase Six program of Rusa, mm -hmm. and along with our team members, Mr. Devashakti. Ms. Neha Jayalakshmi and other elite participants. We welcome you, madam. Now over to Sneha Jayalakshmi for official uh, introduction. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Uh, here is a short introduction about LLRSM. We welcome you, ma'am. Uh, on behalf of School of Commerce and Bachelor University, she holds more than a decade years of experience in IT. 6.5 years of at Infosys Limited, more than Three years now at Covey.com as a trainer, product coordinator, technical lead, product consultant across domain e-commerce, digital marketing, ERP, banking, and more. She is also an expertise in Microsoft technology, Azure Serverless, webless application security, and product marketing. At a speaker in the technical communities. Apart from that, she has also graduated from. Uh, become a social media influencer in 2021. Discover the influences behind the influence market. We welcome you. Thank you so much, Sneha. Thank you. Yeah. I hope the gathering is all set to uh, kickstart the session for the today. Let me share my screen and we shall get started from there. So can you all see my screen? A quick confirmation would be of help. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yeah. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to um, meet young talents and uh, uh, aspiring individuals here uh, today um, on the topic that has been of my interest in the recent past. And Sneha gave me a wonderful introduction of uh, um, what I am and um, how am I uh, uh, related to this topic today. So I would do some just justice by uh, talking about how um, how I gained talk, uh, a knowledge on this topic and what am I going to share today. A quick um, summary of what's going to be today's agenda. I hope this um, title is going to be a curious, like you, it's, it's going to uh, improve the curiosity in you, how to become a social media influencer in the upcoming new year. So we are all set to... Uh, welcome the new year and uh, uh, I uh, uh, bring this topic essentially to this to table so that you will have a uh, good career path set in front of you as you start off with the um, new year of 2021. Let us try to discover the science behind this uh, latest trend, the buzzword now, influencer marketing. So how did I get to um, get an opportunity to explore this segment is, so as uh, Sneha rightly mentioned, right now I play a role of a product consultant of Serverless 360, which is a product which is technically sound and that is the reason why a technical person like me had to take up a role of um, product consultant, which involves 
bit of marketing as well. Though I have a dedicated marketing team who take care of full-fledged marketing um, uh, for the product, but I need to be at the decision-making role to make sure that the right technology is served to our target audience. So that is what brought my involvement into the digital marketing segment and that's how i started exploring and learning uh, different techniques through which you can make your product rightly reach your end users and one of the most recent and the most effective uh, ways of uh, making our taking our product to the customer is influencer marketing so in this whole session i'm going to first deal with the basics of uh, uh, the influencer marketing. So let us first put the straightforward question, what is influencer marketing? Let us try to understand how is it different from or how does it co like um, overlaps with other basic marketing techniques that we have learned throughout the six phases of this program and how is it the trend of uh, today? Who are the influencers now? So where do I find the influencers? Can I be one? Can you be one? So let us try to answer those questions in the second segment of this uh, session. Some I would like to bring together some statistics from um, throughout across the world uh, that would give you in confidence of what is uh, uh, the present in which we are and uh, what is going to be the future. Can I choose this as one of my career uh, goal? So let us get those questions answered in the some stats section, and uh, then we'll move ahead with. Uh, how can you establish yourself as an influencer? What are all the platforms that are available that can facilitate you or accelerate, in fact, uh, you becoming an influencer and monetizing your uh, influence in the community? And let us end the session with a core responsibility that we as an influencer hold. What is the core purpose of being an influencer or reaching out to an influencer um, in um, uh, achieving the influencer marketing? So as I have a regular pattern of dealing with the topics in the, my past sessions as well, so I have two perspectives in approaching this particular concept as we did for all other marketing strategies. So here we will try to understand from an organization's perspective, why will an organization choose influencer marketing? And uh, from the second perspective of as an individual, how can I be an influencer? What is the benefit that I can attain by being an influencer? So I'm sure by the end of this session, we would have uh, very clear answers for both of these. And today I'm going to take you through a compilation of all the, um, uh, the uh, content that I acquired in the uh, authentic sources through which I learned appropriately what this influence marketing is. And I'll also show you how we did this for my product and how we are doing it and how successful we are in getting this done. And with this context setting, I hope we all are set to expect what is in store for you all in this session. So let us go ahead and then kickstart with the basics of what is influencer marketing? Hope you all can see the presentation here now. And in case that uh, the, uh, to the, with the high title heading of what is influencer marketing. So let us try to understand the uh, bare minimum definition of what is influencer marketing. So at its most basic, influencer marketing is a hybrid of oh, old okay. and new marketing tools. Taking the idea of a celebrity endorsement and placing it into a modern day content driven marketing campaign. That is all is all about. So let me try to demystify the statement for you for better understanding. So we have seen this influencer marketing day in and day out. So have you um, encountered an advertisement wherein a celebrity comes on the screen, says that I use this product, it has proven to be good, go ahead and then start using. So it could be a um, cosmetic or it could be a jewelry shop wherein they say that this is where you get the most reliable product. So here they are putting forth a celebrity endorsement. Like they have a celebrity who is very well known to us. We are connected to them in one or the other way. And they are 
trying to bring in modern day content driven marketing campaign along with them say and they create and content out of them it could be an artist acting or it could be an blogger in their blog they have an segment which says that i recommend this particular product for your um, this to solve this particular problem it has proven for me so you can give it a try so it is all about bringing together two different segments of uh, marketing and content marketing and and celebrity endorsement and they have connected it um, so facilitating with the help of influencer marketing tools available in the market so how successful this has been so it has been proven that marketers received 6.85 dollar in earned media value for every 1 dollar spent on influencer marketing so this sounds to be an really an uh, high return on investment isn't it so i invest 1 dollar on my advertisement and i get 6.85 back which means an higher percentage of assured sales so this is an authentic information from adweek so this would have given you a decoyate in uh, interest to start off with exploring what this influencer marketing is all about so let us try to explore further so what works in influencer marketing in fact so we carefully consider your approach in influencer marketing so if you want influencer marketing to work the right way for you you have to carefully consider your approach in influencer marketing so what what do i mean by the approach here be very organized put together a strategy plan budget and spend time on the research so you will have to reach out to the right influencer if i make mistake in identifying the right influencer then all my planning budget and my strategy everything would go on for a waste and be patient and be human people talking to people not companies talking to companies so here we are not dealing with companies we are instead dealing with people who are reaching out to people at the other end so you need to be patient it would take some time for the relationship to get built and for you to reap the benefits and uh, the choice of influencer is key here and if we don't get it right then we are not going to get the expected result and another important factor we need to consider is develop a schedule so when you sign an engagement with an influencer so you have to figure out does the influencer prefer monthly quarterly biannual calls or newsletters so what is their comfortable zone how successful they have been with their schedule in the past that is something that needs exploration so integrate with your pr schedule product release schedule etc say i have an product which is technically sound so the influencer that i choose should be from the same segment who has proven or um con like a very confident knowledge on that particular segment so where people are ready to follow him for his knowledge on that particular segment say so my product is built for assure so i need to find an influencer who has got the um good number of followers reaching out to him for his content on asher and as we fix on a schedule you have to send emails on behalf of the key executives you'll have to plan travel schedules for uh, executives and arrange face to face meetings so it's not just an uh, uh, digital influencer marketing you will also have an opportunity to reach out to people in person for which you need to have an on uh, the right schedule that matches with your product schedule so what has been the influencer marketing stats so 90% of the consumers trust pure recommendations so this has proven right even in our society when we look at uh, things that we are exposed to every day why do we have celebrities jumping in on advertisements now and then so that is because people have uh, like tend to um, accept the recommendations from uh, the trustworthy peers and user generated content is 50% more trusted by internet users than traditional media 
So when it comes from an user, even in our previous sessions on content marketing, we were talking about every single content that you present to your customer, give a personal touch to it. Because people tend to recognize content which has been generated by user rather than from an automated or unknown anonymous content. Yeah. Consumers are 71 percentage more likely to make a purchase based on social media referrals. Yes, and uh, to considering the current COVID situation, most of our shoppings and most of our purchases are, happens on social media. And uh, people on an average spend at least two and a half hours a day in social media. So like Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter platforms, people have spent at least two and a half hours. Wherein the physical interaction with people has come down and digital interaction has gone up. And it is our capability to capitalize it. 81 percentage of US consumers trust advice and information from blogs. So an authentic blog, which sounds to be the right source of information that for that particular topic, 81 percentage of people have admitted to go ahead with the recommendations mentioned in those blogs. So let us look at some real world scenarios. So what consumers uh, want? They want value. So 64 percentage of influencers say their audience respect that they provide value about the topics they are interested in. So if fashion is a segment of my interest, I love to spend my time and effort in understanding what is the reason fashion trends are and I should sow my audiences with the right content, which would be of value to them. Yeah. While 59 percentage state that their audience enjoys how they interact with them listen and respond online so that is why you have you find variety of content on online isn't it but when you always look for the highest percentage is uh, importance is given only to value your conversion can increase three to ten times when brand shares the content through influencers in their industry so without an influencer if you can get three percentage of conversion, it is proven to uh, improve by tenfold when you send the same information through an influencer with command on that particular space. So one simple rule, influencer marketing is marketing to influencers. So influencers marketing tells us that our time is better spent in marketing directly to influential people who likes and dislikes we already know are well aligned with your own so and if i'm following a person in instagram or linkedin or twitter so i'm naturally attracted towards or i am uh, my interest and their interest are in line so anything that my influencer likes is going to be of my interest as well so if i have thousands of followers in twitter so uh, whatever i tweet it is most likely that those thousands of followers are going to read through that and they are going to listen to that. When I say Serverless 360 has proven to solve uh, problems of enterprise customers, people believe that. When they are also an enterprise customer, they are going to give it at least a try to check whether the solution fits in there or not. But what to note here is when I am an influencer, I should make sure that I recommend only and quality content to my followers so that they always go by my words in future as well. So influencer marketing generates as much as 11 times banner ad and ROI. So, so we often come across banner ads, isn't it? So you open a web page based on your browsing history, you'll have a number of banner ads lying on all parts of your web page content. How many times do we click through that? Or how many times do we say stop showing this ad? So it has becoming annoying, isn't it? When you repeatedly see an ad, people tend to neglect that. But in contrast, when you, you have a content that is served by an influencer and there is a recommendation for a product in that content, there is an 11 times higher return on investment in this segment. So this influencer marketing is isn't just about finding someone with an audience and offering them money. No, it is not. So you will have to figure out 
third person for your it is more authentic than an ad you have to write find the right influencer so you should use influencer marketing because it's more authentic than an ad because it comes from a person straight away who has connect with their audiences it is most cost effective when compared to other marketing channels because it, here you are dealing with a person not with an tool it's an easy way to build trust you know, the influencer has already built the trust with their audiences it's all about taking your product through a person who has already got trust with their audience it provides access to a large audience so through a single person you're reaching out to millions and millions of people and that is also in a more authentic way it's a way to create real time engagement so when and celebrity comes live you have millions of people coming online to watch that that's the that is how the current trend has proven to and when you interact with the kids or teenagers now they take youtubers and so social media celebrities as their role models how often do you hear from kids saying that i want to become a youtuber i hear it quite often because i have a lot of time spending with my kid and my um, neighbors and i often get to hear from them right say my uh, area of interest is uh, minecraft and i want to be a youtuber uh, youtube gamer so i often hear this which has an a great trend switch is yes, you can effectively win over a new target audience because your influencer has already done it for you it provides shareable content for exponential results so these are some hand picked reasons why you should use influencer marketing <clears throat> 71 percentage of influencers say their audience loves that they are themselves open honest funny and willing to call it they see like call it like they see it so <clears throat> this is why influencers have proven to be successful people have started looking at them as one among them yeah so but you still have four top challenges in with this influencer marketing it is very necessary whenever you explore a new strategy uh, when as you evaluate the pros of it it is necessary that we also evaluate the cons of it so that we uh, intentionally keep those cons out of it or overcome these <clears throat> so the top most challenge here is identifying the right influencer so that is a key challenge So if you get it right, if you find the right influencer, then half of your challenge is gone. You can reach out to your audience um, at ease through your influencer. But what if I go wrong? That isn't critical step, isn't it? So finding the right engagement tactics. So when you choose the right influencer, the next is find out what content would bring in the maximum engagement. So here just as we discussed about various other marketing techniques you should have ab testing in place you should measure how the performance of the campaigns are going on and then keep track of your influencers activity so all these four challenges can be intentionally overcome with the help of following or continuous monitoring on these and continuous testing on the content that you serve so choose the right influencer identify your right engagement tactics and measure the performance of how your campaigns are working over a period of time keep track of your influencers activity it's not an one day's job it's not like you find a person give the money and expect your roi that doesn't work as simple as that instead you will have to find the right person give them the right engagement tactics measure the performance and keep track of the complete flow So let us discover an action plan. So me as an organization user, what are all the steps that I will have to stick on to to ensure my influencer marketing I get it right? So let us say the step one is define. So influencer marketing begins with identifying your target customer. So if I have a product, I should identify who is going to be my target customers. say i have a cosmetic product which is an anti aging solution 
so my ideal uh, target audience would be women of age 30 plus so identify your target customer understanding who impacts and how they are discovering evaluating and deciding to buy the merchandise so this involves some amount of analysis at the background who is your target audience what do they give most value to whom do they trust at that age segment so this is a definition of your customer base that is step one step two is discover influence is subjective isn't it so you will need to search for people who produce and share content that impacts your business or your customers decision making so you need to identify the right person who can convey the right content the right way because we have often seen the same information when it goes from different people might reach the end users different way <clears throat> so you will have to identify the right subject the right influencer who can deliver your content the right way to your target audience so the first step is define your target customers and the second step is identify the subject who is going to be your influencer discover that third so i have identified the influencer and i know about my customers third step is monitor so listen to your specific influencers and track their content like so for example um, a, a technically sound product like mine people would prefer to read the content that this blocks is something that would work the best for us yes so when i choose an influencer i should look at their contents like how authentic do they write how much research do they uh, do to come up with a very good content does it prove to be a real-time production usable content so all these background checks that you will have to do monitor monitor your influences and track their content ask the questions what topics do they write about what are they sharing what questions are their audience or members asking them so these are certain things you will have to monitor if you ask me where do you monitor social media yes it is all open book go to instagram figure out people with a lot of followers or how what kind of comments do they get how influential are they how many people like them how many people dislike them so all these evaluations do at the background take action so start building relationships through simple actions like following and sharing their links so to go ahead and then say you cannot straight away start proposing a business plan isn't it so build in relationships slowly say uh, our major influencers would exist in linkedin because mine is a professional product so professional platform social media platform is what uh, is ideal for us uh, so in linkedin we figure out who are all people who work in microsoft azure space who are identified influencers what is the post that they do day in and day out how relevant are that how what is the quality of the post so all these are um, the background actions that we take on them yes and we share any authentic and if we find a uh, tweet to be worthy share it if you find and post linkedin post to be good one share it like it and they will build relationship so get to know them build trust then plan actions that will enable you to work together so that is how you can take end relationship ahead yeah i'm talking about professional relationship yeah. and then measure it keep track of relationships you are building and how they are converting into concrete events like visits introductions mentions and eventually leads even see nowadays even the conferences are going on um on virtual isn't it so on saturday we had a massive event called n365 which went on completely virtual and we have an year on year integrate 2020 an international event organized and delivered by our organization which we were forced to go completely virtual this year so things are going virtual so that is where social media influencer marketing will pick up is picking up so let us see 
Which of the following forms of advertising is most effective at influencing you make to purchase? So these friend recommendation has proven to be 78% successive because it is one to one, isn't it? So I have hundreds of friends to whom I personally recommend that go ahead and buy this product. It would definitely turn out. When it is TV commercials, print ads or banner or display ads, there is no personal touch in that. So though if it is a TV commercial, the first time we would pay attention to, but the next time on, there is no personal connect with that. So that is why it, they have a relatively lesser uh, influencing rate, whereas a friend recommendation has got the highest of 78 percentage. So now let's take a pass here. So till now we have been trying to understand what is influencer marketing and uh, what are the challenges in that, what should be the steps that I have to follow to get it right and uh, let us understand a um, bit more on this with the help of some case studies. So real-time case studies, how certain companies have made use of influencer marketing to have a better sale. Yeah. So PewDiePie is the most important YouTuber in the world. He teamed up with the makers of a horror film set in the French catacombs under Paris, creating a series of videos in which he underwent challenges in the catacombs. <clears throat> it was pitch perfect content for PewDiePie's 27 million subscribers and received nearly double the views as the movie's trailer. So every day one, everybody won, right? So it is for PewDiePie, he got the um, commission for uh, the influencer marketing for the French movie uh, producers. They had an excellent reach to 27 million subscribers. For the 27 million customers, uh, subscribers, they were served with the content they were interested on. So this is the beauty of influencer marketing. Here, everybody wins. The marketer, the influencer, and even the and customer. So everyone gets served with what they want. Yeah. So he had 27 million subscribers. So Megan McCarthy, a Walmart found that Megan McCarthy of a famous wine as among one of the top millennial influencers and partnered with her to integrate their promotion into her daily conversations. So what did she do? Posting on Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, Megan put her stamp of approval and explained exactly why her audience should care about the promotion. Her posts garnered hundreds of follow up posts and tweets. The partnership with Megan made an impact like no TV commercial campaign ever would. So here, Megan had 6,43,284 followers. And she did it for brand Walmart. And <clears throat> that proven to be an authentic content from an influencer. So all her followers found that to be an, uh, say, uh, when I say that, I have used it. You will definitely like it. Give it a try. People will tend to go about it, right? So that is what has happened exactly here. Food Beast is known for his crazy off the beaten path recipes. So when Ken Salad teamed up with Food Beast to create a new recipe, the goal was clear. Go viral. Food Beast created the Ranch Taco Salad Code, a one of a kind recipe to create a savory treat using Ken Salad dressing. Pulling in over 6,000 shares on Facebook, this creation sparked a flurry of comments and likes and landed hundreds of thousands of eyeballs on Ken's dressing. So Ken's dressing is an uh, salad dressing um, item. So they paired up with a uh, food blogger and uh, this team proven to be viral on the social media. So this is how you'll have to find the right influencer who can take you to the right audience. So this guy already had a uh, <clears throat> uh, huge following followers of uh, uh, 12,23,133 followers. Uh, 
like looking out or signing into his channel for his uh, interesting recipes and uh, the skin salad dressing rightly made use of that to make reach to uh, his followers so this brings us and here are some other interesting links that i would share uh, late as i share this presentation so these are really interesting case studies that you can uh, go through to check for uh, how to get influenza marketing correct and uh, some more interesting case studies so now coming into the second segment so now we saw from the organization's perspective isn't it so how how do i uh, uh, do the influencer marketing right for my organization and how companies have proven that influencer marketing has been very really rewarding for them so now getting into the next interesting segment of the session me as an influencer who are influencers in uh, today's world or today's social media journey who are the influencers where are they and how are they used to make a business successful so this segment of the session is dedicated to individuals who wants to understand what you can do as an influencer how you can groom yourself as an influencer and how influencers has been successful in the today's uh, trend of influencer marketing so let us look at them so who are they who are influencers how powerful are they and what's their job to be done so is it really a uh, job profile now or do i get paid as an influencer yes of course so you would be shocked to see how much influencers are getting paid off and how so what a successful career path it is so who is an influencer an influencer sender is someone who has our trust and who through their opinions can have an effect on our thinking and decision making so that's what the, even the literal meaning of the word influencer mean is and that see if i can convey something right to you and make you think and decide that what i am saying is right for you then i am your influencer yes so influencer is a person who has our trust so i am an a trustworthy person so when i tell you that this is going to be good for you in the right way you then you start thinking that yes whatever she tells me is right for me so i am an influencer so it's modern leadership of thoughts opinions or even styles so you see and celebrate we are in a fashion statement and that becomes a fashion statement everybody starts following you know, following the same they dress up like that yes when i come forward and then say that so this is what is right for you and people start believing that yes that is right then i am an influencer by leadership of thoughts and opinions so can you be an influencer yes when you have the confidence that what you are doing is right then you can be an influencer so 7 in 10 youtube subscribers say that youtube creators shape and change culture yes so how much time do we spend on youtube every day so anything that we need either it's a do it yourself or it can be an uh, uh, news or it can be uh, um and um technology that we need to learn so we youtube is a go to place youtube is where you land up to learn anything new isn't it so seven in one youtube subscribers say that youtube creators can shape and change the culture so it has been a such a powerful tool through which i need not rely on anybody to take the um my ideas to people if my ideas prove to be of value then people start subscribing to me people start listening to me i become an influencer i evolve into an influencer so 2 minutes and 8 seconds average time that we spend engaging with an influencer content so this is what is the time that you can catch hold of your users for so within this 2 minutes and 8 seconds if you prove to give them and quality content they stay with you So why do influencers matter? 
consumers trust recommendations from a third party more often than a brand itself say if i own a brand if i keep talking about it people would naturally tend to say that it's yours you would say it is good but if a third person comes in and then says say i have used this product and this has proved to be good to me say you have you observed the recent ads of dow so you don't find any celebrity in that isn't it so they reach out to common women like us so they make them try out the product and they come forward with their conclusion they um come forward present their feedback to us so when you tend to look at the feedback of a product from a third person who is more connected to us you tend to believe it so that is a strategy behind here so 40 percentage of gen users say their favorite youtuber understand them better than their real life friends because people spend more time with their youtubers than their real life friends right this whether we accept it or not whether we are happy with it or not this is a generation that we are living with now so 40 percentage of the gen zers say that they find their youtubers to understand them better they they find the youtubers to talk their mind than they are real world friends 83% of the consumers trust recommendations from their peers over advertising so what determines your influence yes so anything that we do there should be some measurement metrics isn't it so here even we have three measurement metrics so when i am an influencer how am i measured yes reach how effective am i in delivering the content to the followers that's my reach like how many people listen to my um speech today so when i have an uh, <clears throat> youtube channel how many subscribers do i have that's my reach relevance how influential they actually are for a specific brand or topic so what has been the <clears throat> we can con we can co connect this with then sign up say looking at this advertisement how many people have looked into this product real and resonance is the third parameter which says how successful they are in influencing the targeted audience this is the actual conversion how many sales has happened for the influence marketer through this influencer that is the resonance so these are three parameters that would be measured against an influencer to determine what is the rate of their influence on their end users yes so when we talk about influencers there are certain types of influencers by their effectiveness so what are the different types of influences general types of influences are mega influences who have 1 million plus followers does their reach is too high macro influences who have followers between 10000 and 1 million micro influences who have got 500 to 10000 followers so by this time you all would be aspiring to become a mega influencer one or the other day right but i would um ask you to have a pause here and then try to understand the significance of being the in in the all these three segments how effective are they so mega influencers it is proven that their reach is 2% to 5% engagement per post that is so when i find say for example let us take some artists who have an huge fan base and very huge uh, um reach yes so what is their reach to engagement per post 2 to 5% that is out of their total followers uh two are 5% 2 to 5 percentage of the people would see their post that is the engagement on the post they like or do uh, some operations like sharing yeah what are the best at relevance that is when you find the right influencer through them 
they, you are, can be um, you can be confident that you serve the relevant content to them because when they are mega influencers they would be more professional they might have a dedicated social media team who analyzes what they need to post and the content that gets out of a mega influencer would be more professional so the relevance of your product with their content it is best that is that is the best that you can rely on with an mega influencers what are they worst at it's resonance because they are have a huge fan base there is no much connect with their uh, audiences though it reaches out to a huge set of people they are resonance or the conversion through they are uh, share or the content is pretty less they are worst at resonance their speciality is building brand awareness and visibility so when samantha comes and says that mintra has got an end of reason sale we tend to at, at least notice it isn't it so uh, a brand called mintra gets noticed so this brand awareness building yes mega influencers are very good at macro influencers so the reach here is 5 to 25% so in this segment they naturally have 10000 to 1 million of followers uh, and the engagement per post is uh, observed to be 5 to 25 percentage so up to 25 percentage of their total followers view and engage with the post they like or share the content so they are best at relevance still so here even here you can be rest assured that the relevant content is served the end users even here the worst at resonance so you can make use of macro influencers as well for building awareness and engagement so that is what i said as sign up say you want to collect the customers information that engagement can be attained because here the engagement per post rate is high when compared with the uh, mega influencers wherein it was just 5% but here you can reach up to 25% when you design the post or the content the right way micro influencers so here you have a reach of 25 to 50 percentage because say i have an um dedicated list of followers who are very much connected to me yes so here most often to a micro influencer their followers will have a personal touch so the engagement per post rate is high and they are best at resonance so when i uh, have a personal connect with my followers i can influence them or reach out to them to uh, towards a conversion so i can uh, make sure that the product is purchased by them so this is a segment that is very good for building the awareness and driving sales and conversion so micro influencers uh, is the segment where organizations tend to so, um, give more attention to because the conversion here is high so we just saw uh, the categorization of influencers by their followers so there is also another categorization uh, of influencer accounts by activities and the content do they provide so let us try to understand them as well as you can try to connect the slide with your observations in the social media you can come up with a lot of interesting uh, influences that you would have come across day in and day out in platforms like facebook or uh, youtube or instagram or pinterest so let us try to segregate them and understand these concepts better so why should we do this categorization is when you aspire to become an influencer you can choose the bucket which uh, in which you are very strong at or in which you are very passionate about so when you are passionate about something the deliverable or the outcome of that activity is uh, proven to be more effective than doing something on end routine basis isn't it so let us try to understand the categorization of influencers based on the content that they see so aspirational so the followers aspire to be like them 
they mainly share their lifestyle content here so there are certain youtubers or instagram um, uh, influencers who share aspirational contents right so when we look at their videos you get aspired and you want to be like one of them informative they share tips tricks and purely informative content that makes everything easier so when i am an um, um, developer so i would share tips and tricks on how i can effectively build an application isn't it so that is what i am very good at that is what i have experience in so that is what i can give you with that authenticity so that this is a segment where informative influencers are adventurous yes there are people who love traveling who love exploring places so those people create uh, they the, the these creators show the exciting part of the life so through their extreme sports beautiful photography or travel so there is a delegated segment um, which has a huge fan base for so though we cannot personally go in there we always have a curiosity to explore adventurous places on how nice it would be there isn't it so that is the segment of adventurous influencers beauty oriented so those creators focus on inspiring healthy lifestyle fashionable looks and beautiful makeups so all um, um <laughs> girls who are interested in this segment here you have an um most proven segment of influencers here so this has been the segment which has been really successful with respect to influencer marketing in the past entertaining so these entertainers focus on mainly creating and delivering funny and enjoyable contents so prank shows or uh, web series wherein they focus on entertaining their end users so these are different segments of influencers who are categorized based on their uh, content that they serve so here are some examples as well so aspirational for example movie stars musicians athletes socialites who uh, uh, inspire the in younger generation to be uh, like the generations feel like they want to be one among them informative so how to do do it yourself life hacks tutorials home so i myself have a number of favorite uh, um channels in the say life hacks is a wonderful uh, channel which has got an instagram following of 4.3 million so i guess even i would be one among them so do it yourself so you i i have personally consumed content of this segment and i have made a lot of uh, deliverables out of it nast really is another one of the very interesting uh, influencer wherein you get very good authentic content adventurous extreme sports fan travelers and photographers so here are some top instagram influencers in this segment beauty oriented fashion makeup fitness and well being entertaining filmmakers pranksters comedians or gaming so uh, these are certain segments in all people have proven to be successful so they have got considerable amount of uh, followers through which they have uh, been a successful influencer so where are they <clears throat> so we have been talking about influencers and we just saw a list of people and various uh, segments in instagrams so instagram is instagram is the only place where i can be uh, proved to be an influencer so how the influencers are evolving from mere blogging connecting with fans through social media to creating niche content that's what we are going to see in this second segment where are they how do influencers evolve so you can be the next one yes <clears throat> so we have social media channels right so here let us try to explore how these social media channels and influencers are evolving um how are they leading to viewers and users behavior towards content consumption how does their content get served to the customer like end uh, consumers and how they become an influencer how they evolve
democratization of content creation and the rise of image over text so we have naturally started getting attracted towards images over text isn't it this has led to a near end of conventional brand storytelling the rise of smartphone gave powers to bloggers journalists students so anybody can be a journalist now so if i try to capture an most happening event i become a journalist i can report to an um, news channel wherein my news news gets posted if there is the lot of obstacles has been broken with the evolvement of technology everyone has a smartphone literally and we have uh, got applications in that which can open up the whole new world of uh, um, democratization of content mm, yeah the social media channels are evolving at a faster rate so live streaming yes so every wedding now gets live streamed because of see there are restrictions on personally getting in touch with people and that is where technology connects us all though i am at uh, i though i i want to connect to a person at the opposite end of the world i can do it right away without any hesitation that is because of the evolvement in the technology <clears throat> this has also given influencers new creative ways of creating content for their target audience so when i find something to be my passion something to i am best at i take that to my audiences those who have got a similar interest become my followers an average person is spending nearly 2 hours on social media every day and this would have definitely increased by now when we were asked not to go out is yes, they are carving for authentic content and influencers are all fulfilling those carvings with a niche content so as we talk repeatedly about influencers and consumers what is common among the uh, the consumers need and the influencers uh, deliverable is a niche content that is your content should be yours it should be authentic you should have done enough research you should have done it should be in proven content in authentic content that is being served to the end users because that is what people are looking for so which are all the platforms to influencers mostly use <clears throat> there are more beyond this as well but here are those which are uh, few of the top instagram 99 percentage of influencers have instagram 67 percentage facebook in fact facebook has the highest user base but uh, the influencers prefer instagram over facebook a uh, 50.8 percentage influencers use snapchat and uh, 29.8 percent YouTube. So beyond this, there are influencers in Twitter and LinkedIn as well, and it completely depends on the product that you want to take to the end users. So the evolution of social media channels used by influencers has been evolving over a period of time with the with the introduction of new tools into the market. But what remains uh, common is the need for authentic content and the serving of authentic content that is what is sustainable so that's what the platforms might change based on the capabilities that they bring to the table the type of content they let you deliver to the end users that's all is what changes but the content always remains to be authentic so <clears throat> and it is also estimated that the number of influencers per platform versus monthly active users has estimated to grow massively and uh, it, it has got a real good future in the in the uh, upcoming years so these are pretty uh, past analysis i have also gathered the recent analysis stats that would give you a more insights on how the current trends has been and what you can expect in 2021 to position yourself as an influencer in social media marketing so the growing sponsored post by influencers have grown threefold the search interest for instagram influencer tripled between august 2016 to august 2017 so let me show you how it has been now so <clears throat> Mm. <laughs> 
let us look into Google Trends, which gives us a real time. So here it is for uh, the year August. So let us see for 2004 now. Okay, how it has been. So as you observe, after 2015, there has been a massive, massive growth in this particular segment and right now we are in one of the peaks yes so this is how the trend has been and this is why I say this is one of the um, career opportunities that you can definitely choose as you go further So sponsored posts by influencers on Instagram is also increasing. I have got the stats of uh, the last two years, which has been in billions. So that's how the trend has been. Yes. Mobile streaming and YouTube obsessed Gen Z. Yes. So 71% of teens typical entertainment consumption is streaming. And 33% of teens voted that YouTubers as most likely to make them buy a product. Mm. So this has been the trend. Mm. And that's why we can capitalize that. So the online influencers occupy the gap between the celebrities and friends and stake between mass cultural performances and moments of perceived accessibility. So this is a statement from New York Times which says that Online influencers is a huge potential that they seem to be uh, improving in the recent uh, trends wherein they bridge the gap between the celebrities and the friends. So when a celebrity says, we often tend to look at celebrities as a person who is not very connected to this. They have a very different lifestyle. How can they speak our mind? But whereas these online influencers, we see them our next door. Isn't it? So they live with us. So they uh, share the same lifestyle of ours. So when they promote and product, we tend to find more authenticity on that. 81% mm. of internet audience members viewed more live content in 2016 than they did in the previous year. And this has increased year on year. And three times videos on Facebook Live get viewed for um, three times as long as the pre-recorded video. So when somebody comes on live, they feel that, it, say, what is my primary intention here? When they are on live, they are talking in person. So now we are talking in person. So I, I cannot cook up things. It's about what is my experience. It's about what I have learned about this topic is what I can deliver to you. So there is an authenticity here. There is no background drama. Whereas when a, there is a commercial, there would have been uh, and person who prescribed the dialogues to them, there would be a uh, format in which they would have uh, picturized it. But in live, is not picturization. It's as such what is being experienced is being shared. So that is why people prefer this than a uh, pre-recorded video. When well-trusted influencers and compelling live streams come together, it's almost impossible for audiences to look away. Steve Alensky. So Forbes contributor is, uh, says that I mean, that's, that's a now wonderful combination, isn't it? And well-trusted influencer. I uh, have uh, got previous uh, good experiences with them. So I know that they are a master in this field. And they when they come forward to me with a recommendation for the product, I go blindfolded, right? I, I just go ahead and choose that because it has come from a trusted influencer. So well trusted influencer and the compelling live streams come together, it's almost impossible for audiences to look away. The rise of the posted Instagram shot, the pin and trust lifestyle mirage and the slickly <coughs> edited musically video has created an appetite for the raw feed live video that can't be edited, filtered, or deleted before it's beamed out to the world. So what is the um, key here is the content's authenticity. 
So live streaming's rough aesthetic is no more real than the shimmering projections of other social apps. And Lively is loaded with features that gamify conversations, commodify human interactions, and powerfully mold a vision of teenage life. So the applications are also getting modernized. They are helping you provide content which can add gamification, which can add a lot of animations into it. You can make yourself look different through an app. So these all are um, modifying the deliverables as per the requirement of the current generation. And that is why social media influencer marketing has been so successful. So what do the teens say? Online videos are best for 58 percentage of them use it for learning. It could be in technology, it could be in subject. See, tattoo, looking at the current trends, so the whole uh, education happens online, right? So when I need to refer to something extra, I don't have the privilege of going to the library and flipping through a number of books. I rely on the internet. I rely on online videos for learning. And 53% of them for laughing. Like, I just want to get the stress out of me. I want to listen to something very nice and then let out the stress in me. Of course, we all do, isn't it? And 49% for living boredom. And this word is something we often listen from, from the current generation. I get bored because they just want to get out of boredom. And uh, this real definition of boredom... <laughs> I, it's it's very hard for me to identify, but still we need to and accept that people l reach out to the internet or reach out to online videos to get relieved of their boredom because of the limited options for us to physical entertainers. What has been the most popular niches with an average number of followers to influencers on Instagram? The top performing has proven to be modeling and fitness influencers. Because obesity is one of the biggest problems that most of us go through, isn't it? So obviously, this would is going to be the winning segment, modeling and fitness influencers, pets, of course. So when you um, actually look into the real cute videos of uh, the pets, even though uh, so much of stress that you have will get relieved of and beauty. So these are uh, proven to be the top performing segments in Instagrams. So if any of you in this uh, um, group has got a similar passion on a similar segments, then you can choose them as your niche and you can start serving the right content to make yourself the social media influencer. So Teens say social media content is becoming more influential in their purchasing decisions. So obviously, so what do we actually do when we um, choose to buy a uh, product online? In fact, Amazon has an, uh, I think it is Spark, an inbuilt component in their app in the US, which uh, lets the customers uh, feed in their, uh, it's an Instagram-like application within Amazon itself, which will let them feed in their um, um, actual pictures. Say I bought a product, I uh, have I, I have an fern I have bought and furnishing uh, uh, furniture. Say let's say sofa. So I take the picture and then upload it in our uh, Amazon apps. You have in uh, place for review and you can add it there. Similarly, they have an Instagram-like app within the US Amazon app wherein you can upload the picture and people can uh, like that, comment that and share on that. And that has proven to improve their sales on a uh, particular segment. So they, uh, teens have also agreed on this. So the survey says that 63% um, purchase decisions have been more influential through the social media content. So departing from the highly manufactured pop stars of generations past, Janus feels that they are best captured by diverse figures who are 
anything but one size fits all so they are more looking for people who are one among them i i want to listen it from a person who is more like me their role models are also more likely to use their platforms to promote societal change and to strive to actively influence the culture just as much as they engage with so this has been uh, the findings of um the uh surveys from the teens on what do they expect from their influences so as we saw over on years and years the platforms are also evolving to uh, let the influencers save different forms of contents say musically lets you post contents on uh, your uh, um <clears throat> say this music industry's new influences can be uh, entertained with the help of musically yes this is growing incredibly fast and is becoming recognized as an opportunities for brands to reach and influence an audience of millennials so musically is growing by around 13 million users each month and is a network connecting creative individuals it's becoming known for us 15 second looping videos made by the creators or musers many including lip syncing singing and dancing so stars in the music industry are starting to take note and leverage the platform to release teasers of their new albums and big brands such as coca cola are teaming up with influential musers on the platform for campaigns such as share a coke so this is how organizations are capitalizing influencers so if you choose your platform and you prove to be an influencer in that platform then organizations would definitely reach out to you for um, <clears throat> like pitching their product and hence you earn money we will also see how you can uh, connect yourself with an organization as we proceed further yeah so musically is one platform which has a uh, uh proven to ma massively grow and you would have come across a lot of the platforms as well smoon is where you have got ah uh, this is what i was talking about amazon's new hybrid social and shopping service park so this new feature will be available in amazon prime subscribers in the us which seems to be inspired by instagram and it is of uh, a shoppable photos so i can click on the product and they can land on the amazon's uh, product listing menu and i can continue shopping there so if i find that this is would be of um my interest too i can proceed to buy right from that picture so on amazon spark people can discover things such as home decor shoes food books etc from people who share same interests so users are presented with an image um, heavy feed of product ideas and other stories in some cases these posts will read more like a product review someone detailing their personal experience with an item for an example but this um the best part is you get the link to the same product right from here and you can you, you are actually looking at the experiences of the people and when you find that your requirement is coinciding with theirs you just proceed to purchase that product so it's an influencer led purchase which is integrated in an e-commerce application so videos updates more make sharing simple and emotive yes so uh, even even for my product we have trying out various forms of content and we discovered that video contents prove to be more emotive and is more connection or uh, we could attract more engagement through the video contents rather than uh, through an um, um <coughs> blog content sharing updates with the followers transformed when the biggest channels made it possible to record short videos yes so when uh, recording short videos became possible um the the content strategy also started changing taking a shift so starting out with youtube where influencers could record content to share with their followers in a more engaging and emotive way this evolved as an attention spans became shorter and influencer on other platforms wanted the convenience of sharing an update in an instant the short lived video snippet gives influencers an opportunity to present a feeling and experience in 
more experimental way something younger generation are carving and more and more for so uh, obviously right and picture which is a static content is less interactive than and a video which is in dynamic content so i get to express my view i get to connect with my audience better through an video than an uh, a text so that is why twitter and uh, in fact all social media platforms now support uh, videos even instagram has now got reels through which you can record uh, short videos and then you can share it with your uh, <coughs> users consumers live streaming another proven form of um, a successful influencer content so nbc designed a campaign for the broadcasting of a hair spray it's a tv series with the help of influencers and fb live so nbc entertainment decided to make use of the live feature on facebook for doing hair spray live the broadcaster collaborated with around 20 influencers who were responsible for hosting the hair spray live facebook live and creating additional content the bus for the show recently social media platform like facebook instagram snapchat youtube has included the live streaming feature in their platforms so live streaming is an outstanding way to reach to the online audience <clears throat> so now people have made use of these live streaming capabilities to even um, create contents isn't it so you know, uh, i recently came across a short film which uh, sounded as an uh, online um uh, live streaming session so that is how this, there are educational sessions which are uh, uh, delivered through live streaming there are conferences which happen through live streaming so the, this technology advancement has brought in a uh, uh, huge shift in the type of content that we serve and how we connect with our uh, people amidst of all obstacles we have like right now so how are they used what are the best examples so before we um, proceed further um, should we uh, take a short break so what do you feel the participants are we good to go ahead or do you want an 5 minute break and then continue further from 5 minute break <clears throat> yeah we can have a uh, five minutes break and then we'll catch up at i hope all are with me isn't it so do you all find the session to be relevant very informative i must say very informative thank you ma'am yeah. thank you so much uh, manish so um, let's catch up after five minutes and then continue from there
so I'm back. Let us continue from where we left. <coughs> um, are we are we good to start or? let's get started <clears throat> so we just saw who are influencers what do they do and um, where do they do um, where do they influence people the platforms and how the platforms have been evolving over the period of time how the kind kind of content uh, they serve has also changed we saw the categorization of influencers based on their number of followers and the type of content that they serve how are they used so what are the best examples of how brands are working with the influencers to achieve various marketing goals that is what we are going to see in this segment this is actually the interesting segment wherein we uh, see how organizations capitalize the influencers influence the users base yeah let us see some interesting case studies here We'll explore how brands are using influencers in their marketing strategies. We'll uh, uh, go through some examples of specific campaigns as well as ideas for influencer and brand collaborations together with the key learnings to inspire brands. So these cases and ideas will cover four key marketing goals that brands can reach as a result of harnessing an influencer's authentic relationship with their target audience. So what are the four key uh, marketing goals are sales. So obviously only that is my ultimate goal, right? How do I sell my product for the promotion of the product launch or the branded event? That, that could be one of my goals or exposure. I just want to spread the word of a brand among the target audiences. So that could be my marketing goal here. Awareness. To draw the attention of meaningful causes and associate activists with a brand. I just want to let the community know that I have a product like this and this would be useful for them or anybody to, they are uh, relevant with. Yeah. Values. For representing a brand of embodying a specific character trait. So these could be the four key marketing goals that an organization might have to go ahead and um, choose an influencer and uh, perform an influencer marketing. <clears throat> so let us check an example of uh, um, influencer marketing with a marketing goal of sales. MAC against the influencers. The MAC cosmetic has merged their product development with digital influencers. This is a very interesting case study of how did they do it? So what did they actually do it? Why did they do it? And what is the learning for us from this case study? So that is how we are going to look at the case studies uh, under each of the marketing goals here. Yeah? What did they actually do? In anticipation of their new product launch, Mac partnered with a number of influencers to market to people in their home country. Going one step further, they involved the influencers in the development and creation of their own lipsticks. So each color was a neutral tone, created to, to suit the skin tone of each influencer. The influencers then spread the word of their experience to their followings across social channels and via various content mediums. So if you observe here, they are, the, the organization's strategic move is to bring the influencers on board with them in their development cycle itself. And they made them experience their product. So what we also need to observe here is, only when I am very confident about my product, I would 
make an strategic decision of bringing people on board with me and giving them the privilege of trying it out. So that goes without saying. First of all, you should have the right product uh, that is designed for a target audience. You should know your customers and you should have the right deliverable. So this gap between the product and the consumers is what you can fill with the various marketing strategies. And here you fill that with the influencers who are people. Why did they actually do this? So being able to follow their favorite influencer through the creation of the lipstick generates not only entertaining and eye-opening content, but also an element of transparency, transparency which adds the already higher levels of trust customers have in these new era celebrities. So the followers of these influencers already have a trust factor associated in their relationship. To strengthen that more, here there is a transparency between uh, um, them that they, they are trying out the product and it is uh, mm, transparently delivered to the end users. So as each lipstick was created to suit the complexion of the influencers, it made it more likely to suit a higher number of people of the same ethnicity, uh, demonstrating a diversity in their products. So we tend to follow people who are similar to us, right? It also holds good on the tone and their texture on or, or what their taste is all about. So uh, this gave an sample set for the organization also to come up with a diversity in their products. So what is the key learning for us in this scenario is in an age of brand transparency, inviting influencers who can then share and behind the scene experience with their following can be a fast track to gaining more trust from new and existing fans. So here I would like to emphasize the word transparency. So this organization has gone and one level further by involving the influencers at behind the scene and they permitted them to share their experience with their fan, which uh, opened up and transparency to the our existing fans and more trust on the band, brand as well through the influencers. So, and that would have indeed invited more uh, sales, isn't it? So, <clears throat> Axe influence young men to, into styling. So, Axe campaign to encourage men to try out hair styling saw them join forces with 30 top male influencers. So what did they actually do? They picked up 30 male influencers. Uh, they partnered with them from a variety of social channels, from YouTube, Facebook, uh, and from different backgrounds who represent various circles of young men, which included comedian, musician, gamer, cook. From different uh, journals, different medias, they picked up people, 30 top male influencers. Uh, Axe wanted an every man feel to this campaign. That's why they picked the people from various backgrounds. So they were given the freedom by Axe to develop their own message in their own style to communicate with their following via Instagram. So as long as they gave tips in some way on how and why they should give uh, hair styling a try. So they gave in context. So the intention here is they will have to share uh, their own content on the platforms that they are strong at. The context is, why should they give their hair a styling? Why should they give it a try to style their hair? So this is the context. And they give, gave them the complete freedom to convey it the right way to their target audience. So they have been conveying it correct. That is why they have so many followers, isn't it? So Axe gave them the freedom to convey it in their own style. Why did they do this? Through Though gaining in popularity, there is still an apprehension among men to take part in much male grooming. So Axe hoped to change that by addressing one of the barriers that seem to prevent guys from even trying, not knowing where to start. That's often a problem, isn't it? Mostly the key benefit talked about was how it can improve the confidence. So when I get a new haircut, I feel more confident. Nobody can deny that. 
So Edelman Intelligence Research revealed in 2016 survey that 93% of men who style their hair felt an increase in self-confidence, but 65% don't style regularly. So that's because we don't want to give it a start, that's all. But when we do it, we definitely feel good. So you, uh, the primary intent here is make them feel that it is important to them. Make them uh, believe that you would be more confident when you get this done. And that converts into sales for them. So encouraging an audience to view a stereotype in a new way can position a brand as an influential name. Even outside of their own market, it can encourage new behaviors and so bring about new needs for customers. So people will start believing that a haircut would definitely improve my confidence and it opens up a new customer base. Micro but impactful. Adidas, with the help of 30 micro-influencers, made a powerful impact during the English Premier League season. <clears throat> what did they actually do? For the launch of their Glitch app, Adidas partnered with 30 micro-influencers from various football academies across London. So they helped promote the new line of soccer boots, only made available via the app, as well as to design and name both the app and the new boots. So Glitch was an instant hit amongst football fans after it was launched in October last year and the influencers continue to work full time on the Glitch app. So this is how is the end career opportunity for an influencer could be. So why did they actually do that? The invite only access meant the influencers were the decision makers. So when it came to growing the community, something that really drove their enthusiasm and motivation to make it a success. So they, they gave them an ownership. So Mark Makowski, Director of Business Development at Adidas, said that baking that authenticity into the service is key to why it performed well as a test. So that authenticity was the key of success here. So key learning that we should take away from here is empowering influencers uh, through giving them a sense of ownership over the campaign. So the responsibility was completely bestowed to them. So it was their responsibility to um, do it the best. It means that brands can ensure their marketing projects come across to audiences as honest and not with an underlying motive. So the next segment of our the marketing goal, goal here is to give an exposure to the product. ELF's case study would uh, let us understand. ELF Cosmetics is using 50 of its social media fans to build community and drive reach, authenticity and branding. So what did they actually do? The cosmetic brand partnered with 50 of their best customers in a micro-influencer program called BeautyScape, Skip, where each were given the knowledge and confidence to experiment with the new products and share engaging content with their followers. So they were provided with the product, they left them to try it out and share their experience with the followers. A kickoff event was held for all 50 influencers to meet each other and give one another advice on how they built their organic community. So there, there was a platform set up to encourage collaboration among the contributors. Why did they have to do this? The meeting event for influencers really brought across a sense of community and genuine enthusiasm for the brand in their engagements with their followers. The reason ELF chose micro-influencers was primarily down to the finding that accounts with less than 1,000 followers have almost eight times higher engagement rates. We saw this, right, in the classification of influencers. Micro-influencers tend to have higher engagement rates because their followers would be personally connected to them. So ELF was wise here to choose micro-influencers for this activity, uh, which has proven to provide eight times higher engagement rates compared to those uh, with the close to a million typical influencers where the engagement rate was very low as uh, um, less than five to 
two to five percentage. This allowed the chosen influencers to really build meaningful connections with their followers by bonding over a love of the same brand. So key learning for, that, for us from here is cultivating a community for the purpose of more personalized content is more easily achievable with micro influencers rather than macro or mega due to the greater engagement rates. So this is actually in good news for an, uh, um, influencers who wants to start their career now because you would initially start off in the phase of becoming a micro-influencer when you start serving the right content. When you start acquiring uh, like followers, you would be in the phase of micro-influencers and you can be confident that at this phase itself, you can start capitalizing your um, followers list. Like you would you have opportunities to monetize even when you are a micro-influencer. So this is one of the segments that we uh, make use of for our uh, product. Uh, slightly different because in, in we, we have um, Microsoft uh, valuable partners or Azure consultants who work with a number of enterprises across the world. So they help enterprises build their Azure applications. They are more like teachers or tech influencers. So teachers are now acting as a brand ambassadors for educational hardware or software. So technical influencers or Azure consultants have proven to be very good influencers for taking um, my product Serverless 360 to the right enterprise customers. <clears throat> what do they uh, did? Big technology brands such as Amazon, Apple, Google, and Microsoft, as well as smaller startups creating software and tech products are beginning to take uh, on teachers as influencers. So this growing trend is um, seeing teachers promote technology in the classroom by integrating products and services with their teaching styles. Imagine I have a uh, <clears throat> uh, classroom app. That is ideal for teachers to connect with their children, especially uh, in, in situations like this, wherein they can do not have any physical communication. So, uh, teachers tend to uh, do um, propaganda for this product because their teaching is driven through that. So, that is how a product can be um, taken to the end users through teachers and uh, technical influences. So teachers are using the software and products of the companies they are partnered with. They're offering children freebies such as t-shirts the teacher receives from attending workshops with the companies and sometimes even decorating the classroom to represent a certain brand. But there is another uh, bigger advantage in that in uh, capturing audiences of the younger age. The younger generation become familiar quickly with the look of a brand and the feel of using these products. Often the teachers are also able to give feedback on how to make improvements and increase value of their use. So that, that's very true, right? So me, when I use a product, if I come across certain challenges, I write to the product um, <clears throat> ownership on uh, uh, suggestions to improve uh, the efficiency of the product. And schools are already adapting more technology products as it becomes a part of their life, uh, but often struggle with the tight budgets. So here is where companies are stepping in and offering the most influential members of these influential institutions, the teachers, special perks and extra help by simply using their products. Some rewards have included gift cards by Amazon and even the covering of travel expenses to industry-sponsored conferences by more established startups. So these, this is how they try to get hold of younger generation uh, to be more familiar with the product. So when they grow up, they get used to this brand and anything from that brand, they have in kind of authenticity. So if brands can reach the new generation of consumers at an younger age, they are more likely to continue using the products due to the familiarity with the name and the interface and potentially becoming lifelong customers. So that is a long-time vision when we uh, 
uh, target uh, the customers of the younger generation. So now let us see how awareness marketing goal has been achieved using influencers. This was something I was mentioning. Dow launched video series with uh, Shonda Rains. And Dow was collaborating with the director Shonda Rhimes to create short documentary style videos about real beauty. Yeah, you would have observed this. So Dow collaborated with the television producer to direct their new video series, which tells short stories of inspiring women through their in-house studio, uh, Dow Real Beauty Productions. The three-minute short film include no branding after the initial Dow logo at the start instead focuses on the message of real women and real beauty but how this translate would be how how will this translate to the customers yeah? they took note of recent findings which revealed a 69 percentage of women don't feel represented in advertising and that brands who make meaningful connections with audiences perform better in stock market and increase wallet share by up to nine times so if you have women being well represented in your as in your advertisements, it has proven to work much better in these stocks. So Liz Garbus, who directed the series, said that people get their content through places like Netflix or Amazon without commercials. So brands have uh, had to rethink how they um, rely on their messaging in this totally different entertainment landscape. Correct, right? So uh, we get annoyed with advertisements coming in between. So advertisements might vanish after some time, and um, there could be different strategies like a web series coming in, which pushes the project. And you would have already started observing that in the um, the most happening show um, uh, across languages in India, the big boss has got lot of product promotions in between ask tasks right so why did they do that because people have started paying less attention to advertisements so there are different strategies on taking the brand to the actual consumers through various other forms so for brands to begin making more meaningful connections with their customers their content should address hot topic issues which are of real concern to their audience so making them feel represented and understood so influencers could mobilize young voters so politicians and political parties could gain young voters by using social media influencers which is most happening the current trends yes politicians and political co parties could reach an younger audience through influencers and bloggers they speak their language and could educate younger generations politically and help them to understand their political impact so what is the responsibility of a citizen can be very well conveyed at an younger age so that they grow up more uh, responsible a lot of millennials who have the right to vote don't use that right. So the main reasons for that may be that they can't see through all of what's going on in politics or what each party stands for, isn't it? So when I do not have much knowledge on the space, I'm not going to make any decision on that. So, But that shouldn't be a um, case in a healthy um, ecosystem. So they also don't really use traditional channels anymore which political parties often still use to reach an audience such as TV debates. That's no more a channel through which we get to know about politics. So all the youngsters who do not take part in elections could do big shifts in the results of them. If, for example, all young people who would have been able to vote it, <coughs> they, they, there could be a big cha change in the politics that we are facing now, isn't it? Taking a stance on political issues and making a break or making or breaking a brand reputation. Uh, partnering with influencers could be the key in getting it right because of their reliability and closeness to the young audiences. When my goal is to take values to the end users. 
So AT&T has launched an Hello Lab and have cleverly captured the attentions of the millennials who are passionate about connecting with others. So they just created a platform which lets the content creators collaborate among each other. So what did they actually do? By stepping out of the spotlight, AT&T are creating an innovative name for themselves through their Hello Lab project in partnership with Full Screen Media. So social uh, influencers who are innovative, love to connect and have entrepreneurial drive, create the content. They involve people in creation while naming <clears throat> while name dropping AT&T. Yeah, the focus is really on the storytelling and creativity and not on advertising. It's in paying off. It's a community initiative. They just want to build a community in which they let the creators collaborate and come up with informative, uh, valuable content. So why did they actually do it? Is that they wanted to find new levels of engagement and to help creators develop these stories that live on their own platform, not theirs. So this, this is a statement from uh, Valeria Vargas, VP of Advertising and Marketing uh, at at and So it's, it's purely a community initiative by providing a platform for uh, collaborators to, creators to collaborate. So repositioning a brand to appeal to an younger audience should have a relevant spokesperson to embody the brand values. As younger people are now much more in tune with insincere brands and pushy content. So people do not encourage insincere brands and pushy content. They are looking for more authentic content. So you have to <coughs> reposition a brand so that it is appealing for the younger audience. So Samsung's appeal to the ordinary. In their spot for the Academy Awards, Spans, uh, Samsung is using influencer Casey Neistat to reach a new generation of creatives. So in the year's Oscar spot from uh, Samsung, created by creative agency Wayden Kennedy, they used YouTube star Casey Neistat to speak for new creative generation. So not to professional filmmakers or advertisers, but to normal people with ambitions and ideas and smart, Samsung smartphones. So Casey Nestet is known for his down-to-earth character and existing adventurous, often self-created content, making, making him a perfect choice for this campaign and an appeal to an younger audience by Samsung. So this part is um, in the beginning of a campaign which aims to inspire and empower a new guild of creators and uh, which is building on the do what you can't tagline. So um, they are insisting the young energetic people to make use of their Samsung smartphones and come up with uh, uh, niche contents. Yeah, When sharing your customers, uh, why your customer should choose your brand over competitors. It is essential to first uncover their true ambitions and then to communicate with them in a way they can relate to. So you have to connect with your audience irrespective of which marketing platform that we choose. We need to understand our audience and connect with them so that our marketing strategy finally works out. So that brings us to the end of these case studies. I, as I said in the beginning, I have certain interesting <coughs> stats that I would look, like to share to give you an insight on how does the future of uh, uh, influencer marketing looks like. So these are recent statistics that I could collect for uh, in the session. So these are top 10 statistics that you need to know before you choose this as your career path. So how the usage among marketers has been, that is, is, is there a need for influencer marketing among the marketers, that is organizations who want to market their product? Do they still choose influencer marketing as one of their strategy? Yes. 93% of marketers use influencer marketing and this is expected to grow in future. So it is indeed an secure and promising career path to choose.
what is the effectiveness of influencer marketing nine out of ten marketers believe influencer marketing to be an effective form of marketing and what's its return on investment in one of the slides in the previous um, contents we saw it was for one dollar there was in six point eight five dollars of return on investment and in the recent surveys it's, it has proven to improve for every one dollar you spent on influencer marketing you expect an average return of eighteen dollars which is a remarkable return on investment mm. How the industry growth has been. The influencer marketing industry is set to hit a $15 billion by 2022. So we are at the right time to capitalize that. So if you want to become an influencer, start investing. Uh, learn, put, put your learnings in the content marketing um, <clears throat> segment. Create the authentic content in the comfortable form that you can deliver the best on and become an influencer. So when you want to become an influencer, so what are the channels that are available? What, uh, which of them have proven to work the best? So which social platforms are you planning to use for uh, influencer marketing? Uh, depends. So here is a performance list. Instagram has proven to be the highest performing for 97 percentage. Instagram stories with 83 percentage. Facebook, though it has got the huge uh, highest user base it comes in the third position of 79 percentage and then comes the um the rest of the social media platforms so this would change as the trend changes say if videos start performing better there is a highest possibility of youtube coming up top yes with the ban of tic tac there is a highest possibility of it going down so it completely depends on the trends in the content and you should also have an eye on the trends and keep yourself upscaling or rescaling based on the current requirements. Influencer marketing budget. So how much budget ideally an organization segregates for influencer marketing? So 57% of marketers say they will be increasing their influencer marketing budgets in 2020. This is in fact true in our case as well. So I'm going to show you how we have identified influencers and make use of what our product in the upcoming segment. Even we have an estimate of increased budget, marketing budget for influencer marketing in the upcoming years. And top influencer marketing goals, 86% of marketers place raising brand awareness as one of their top three objectives of influencer marketing. <clears throat> Marketing on consumers. Eight out of ten consumers have purchased something after having seen it as a recommendation from an influencer. So, which is a uh, very good success rate. How many Instagram influencers are there? There are half a million influencers who prefers and only channel of influencers Instagram. So, Instagram proves to be the most happening. Uh, platform for influencers and leading topic for branded partnership on Instagram is fashion related. So as we talked about fashion, fitness and well-being. So this is a segment that has proven to be the most happening uh, segment in Instagram. 25% of all sponsored posts on Instagram are fashion related. There are some other uh, segments as well, the travel, adventure uh, which are lining up in the subsequent lists so you can choose the uh, do a bit of analysis you can use tools like google trends to understand what is trending what is most awaited among the end users and you can choose uh, your uh, segment that you are very confident about where you can deliver your niche content and you can go ahead and then start to uh, building your content that is the first step and uh, I'll also tell you about uh, so we talked about influence uh, marketers and influencers so how do you connect them both 
of course youtube itself has a platform which can uh, connect you with uh, um, influencers or uh, you, you there are uh, in inbound um, uh, tool sets within every influencer platforms but apart from that is there any <coughs> best performing influencer marketing platforms in india which has proven to work the best for influencers yes there are so here is an uh, hand picked list of 11 best influencer marketing platforms in india so what is actually an influencer marketing platform it's a platform wherein i can con like connect with the brands so as you see here the splixo is one of the biggest influencer marketing platform which has got 26000 influencers already um, registered to it so if you are a blogger or youtuber or celebrity or instagram influencer campus influencer you can sign up to this platform you can say that i am an influencer i have got these many followers and um, this is my uh, area where i am better best at brands also uh, registered to this platform and this platform would connect um, the influencers with the brands it will check for campaigns that are relevant to you and it will give you the opportunity to monetize your content opa is another with over 50000 influencers it has become hot favorite in less than years time uh, so <clears throat> what are all the brands some of the brands that are already making use of it are lakme mariko godrej wow plum sugar cosmetics the man company and more so this has uh, proven to meet the requirements of certain well-known enterprises so here uh, this o opa specializes in activating thousands of macro and micro influencers so this is the segment that they are focusing on uh, at the cost of just one celebrity influencer and works with influencers on platforms like Instagram, YouTube, blogs, Facebook, and Twitter. So at the cost of one celebrity influencer, you get number of thousands of macro and mm, micro influencers. In fact, in we also saw uh, unproven statistics of the engagement and resonance being more in case of micro influencers. So that is their target here. Influencer Dotton has got over 25,000 social media influencers and this has an interesting feature called influencer discovery you can uh, um, mention your recommend and you can find out an influencer uh, from uh, across the world so Pulpki is an influencer marketing platform based out in India they wherein the brand creators and the content creators influencers can, can create their stories here you can either log in as a brand or agency or create an uh, as a or as a creator or a talent manager and you can collaborate to capitalize your content so here here they have a criteria if you want to become a creator or a talent manager you need to at least have 2000 followers on instagram or a minimum of 500 subscribers in youtube so this um, is a criteria for me to become an influencer in this platform <coughs> so about this also has um, solutions to uh, run promotions carried out by influencers and lack of trust between consumers and then brands so they go one step further to try to sort out the challenges in the relationship between the customers and the influencers and the uh, brands winkle is a bangalore based um, company which initially started for bloggers but then uh, they um, got into the influencer marketing side so and they, they they include clients like flipkart and ygr that's worth mentioning the so brand mentions is one tool that we have personally used this allows you to search for a brand product or keyword and it shows you the list of top influencers so for our product we make use of brand mentions to identify the influencers <coughs> who have command on the assured space and we reach out to them we also use LinkedIn 
as an uh, authentic platform to identify technical evangelists and um, uh, Microsoft uh, uh, valuable partners and Azure consultants across the world. So here are other tools that I will leave it for you to explore and choose the one that would that you think would best work for you. So now to summarize, we learned about what is influenza marketing. Um, we uh, learn how to do it right, how to find your right influencer, fix your target audience, and uh, then we shifted our uh, uh, focus into how can you become an influencer. Uh, what, who are the influencers? Where do they? Uh, what do they do? Where do they do? And how do they do? We answered all those questions. Different categorization of influencers based on the content that they serve and based on uh, the count of that the, the follow followers, the volume of followers do they have, and uh, how this influencer marketing can be. Um, has proven to work best for a number of organizations. We discovered them through the um, various case studies. Yeah. So now, coming to the um, final segment of the um, uh, session, what is your core purpose of being an influencer? <clears throat> if I am an influencer, what are all the responsibilities that I will have to hold? So. First, we will have to raise certain questions to ourselves. Try to answer. <clears throat> try to be genuine and then try to get a valid answer for that. How sensitive are you? <clears throat> so I have to admit that one of the worst examples that we observe here is lack of sensitivity among uh, about what influencers put on social media. Yes, so we can see we should be aware that internet is open to all and we will have to deliver the right content which is valuable to um, the target audience so uh, we can find certain insane content which are of no value which doesn't reach out to say so they, they might go viral but they do not have any val uh, value so they might go viral because of the negative comments that they attract but always make sure that, always raise a question to yourself, how sensitive are you? What is the value of the content that you are producing? That should be your first question. How credible are you? Uh, so being credible and having a huge number of followers are two mutually exclusive factors. Sometimes a lot of social media influence, uh, influencers do not seem to understand the importance of. And so uh, we need to be uh, honest to our best at our work. So that is what um, we should raise a question among ourselves and uh, um, uh, make sure that the content that you put is realistic or not. So we, we should have a principle for ourselves. So here, uh, let us hear it from <clears throat> Yasmin. She says, I try to be very honest about my work because I don't want to put unrealistic things out there to people to follow. What I post for my audience to try at home uh, to make sure that it's very adorable, doable, and comes with minimal risk. Because there is a lot of responsibility when you are communicating with an audience you don't know. I want to make sure that the message I put out there is authentic and easy to follow. That sounds really uh, appealing, isn't it? So when you are credible, when I try out something um, by listening to a YouTube video, and if it comes out the same way, then I'm going to be happy. I'm going to follow that again. But if it, is, if it doesn't uh, turn out to be what I see, then I'm not going to um, go back to that. The, the, the particular influencer ruses is their credibility. So always make sure that you, how credible are you? You have to, I guess, get a positive answer for that before you post your content. How much accountability do you assume for what you put out? It's a complete ownership. So what I put on my um, social media channel is <clears throat> I, I, I am completely accountable for. When I recommend an uh, soap, I say that I have used it. It has proven to be very good for me. I am accountable if in case somebody has got it wrong. 
so uh, check how accountable are you uh, do you assume for what you put out don't assume anything whatever has been proven as what you has to deliver from an influencer perspective always remember there is a set of people who trust you and who is looking for authentic content from us so make sure that we give them the right content which is authentic which is credible and uh, which is sensitive So as I told you, brand monitoring, brand mentions is a tool that we use to identify uh, <coughs> our influencers. So let me show you how we do it for our product, Serverless 360, and how influencer marketing has proven to be the best for us. So um, Sandro Periria is one of the um, Microsoft MVPs. He has got a wide range of expertise into the Microsoft Azure space. And um, as I said, Serverless 360 is the product which has got a dedicated blogging site. We invite blogs from um, uh, guest authors who have proven to be experts in this particular segment. And uh, Sandra is one among them. We have, we have partnered with a number of influencers um, who write for us. And these contents have proven to be Mm, of um, um, highest working, say the, the, the conversions through these uh, uh, contents have proven to be very high. And how do we choose this um, influencers is we do a lot of background exercise on that. So we um, identify them on social media platforms, we uh, monitor their actions over a period of time, and we build a relationship with them. We try to like their posts, share their uh, very uh, good contents, and then build a relationship. <coughs> and then uh, start with, um, we also have other community initiatives like uh, serverless nodes. These are various um, community initiatives that we do. So as I said, our intentions on uh, um, serverless notes is just to help the community to get it right. That is all. So we invite uh, um, uh, recommendations, tips and tricks from uh, industry experts. Say Eldart Grutenbor is an Asher MVP. We have uh, a number of uh, Steve Jan Vickers is another Asher MVP. So we bring in authentic content from industry influencers and we present it to the community. So all that we intend here is to help the community to make use of the technology to the best. It's a complete brand awareness exercise. That's all. We facilitate collaboration of uh, um, between the industry influencers with their end users. And uh, when, when it comes to the next stage of guest blogging, they start talking about uh, technologies in our space. They bring in um, a little more lengthier. So the tip that we saw here is an, um, an crisp content that helps uh, an uh, user in an enterprise to solve the challenge that they might be currently undergoing. Whereas here it talks about a technology and lengthier article. Uh, which is a series of articles. It's like a blog series wherein he talks about a technology and uh, uh, it talks about a problem and a solution to that and a bit more lengthier content. So we strategize this content. We identify an influencer. We strategize the content and uh, um, set an expectation, get the authentic content. Bef after he writes, builds the content, before it gets published, it goes through my personal review, make sure that the content is authentic and technically feasible and correct before it gets published. So it involves a lot of um, <coughs> effort and continuous monitoring and rework as we um, perform this influencer marketing. But the conversion or the success rate is truly high. So now coming into the other side of we being an influencer. So I have been an influencer for a number of technical communities, say Cloud with Chris is one platform where I have uh, spoken on um, 
uh, topics like building smart integration solutions with Microsoft Azure. I had been an influencer here and uh, in uh, this Apple podcast is another platform. Talking Serverless is a uh, community initiative wherein I have spoken about text stringies and other plus where I have been an influencer. So <clears throat> the ultimate uh, goals are just uh, you pro provide in right content that would be of use to your end users and through that you influence the target audience to um, try out and product so uh, if you listen to these podcasts um, we would have um, mentioned like we would have talked mostly about the uh, technology and uh, we would also tell about how uh, my product would be of value to that so if we look into the episode's description we would have mentioned about the product and the link to the product <coughs> that will bring them ultimately to the actual product so here you could have seen mention about the actual product brand mention so this is an example of me being an influencer and here is an example of making use of an influencer to take the product to the right audience I would also like to throw light on some uh, um, interesting articles that would be of use to you when you start working into this space. Again, put this into the chat. So I, I would leave this to the exploration of the audience. That brings us to a kind of end of this session. So here I would like to thank all of you for being wonderful listeners and I am open to any questions if you have. Hope you all were with me, traveling with me and you found this session to be very relevant. So participants, I'm open to uh, any questions if you have on this space or feedbacks. <laughs> so I could see some comments in the <clears throat> chat section thank you thanks for everybody who have given a positive feedback and found this session to be informative and insightful Yeah. What is the main tools for influence a person for purchasing a product? <coughs> uh, so um, I should talk about two tool sets here. One is the platform that you choose to build uh, your influencer base. That could be any social media platform. That is uh, Instagram, which has chosen to be proven to be the best performing for influencers. Um, or um, Instagram stories, Facebook, YouTube, whichever content, form of content that works the best for you. On, and also depends on what is the segment of audience that you are targeting. <clears throat> yeah. And the next is to connect with your brands. That is where we talked about 11 best influencer marketing tools, right? So brand mentions is something which has worked for us, for our segment of uh, product. You can also try Plexo or <coughs> OPA, influencer.in. So these are some uh, top tools that can help you um, build your uh, connection with the brands. So that was response to uh, Shivaratnesh's question. Yeah, thank you.
Is there any other question? On behalf of School of Commerce, Bhatia University, and on behalf of the organizers, I take it as a privilege to thank Ms. LLC K. Sarangam. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much for your wonderful presentation and enlightening us on today's topic. Thank you so much, ma'am, for answering the queries relating to the participants' questions. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, Neha. I think I have one question you, from Bharati Raja. Thank you, thank you, Dev Shakti. Yeah. Uh, I I will just wind up after uh, answering this question. Any best promotion tools used for promote our YouTube channel videos? Yes, yes, there is a uh, very good list of um, tools that you can use for promoting your YouTube videos. Um, Vid IQ, that is one tube buddy, Canva. These are something that I can think of out of the mind. I, I think Hootsuite also has um, <coughs> capability to promote your YouTube videos. Uh, it, you can find them handy. Uh, even in the YouTube's um, monetization page, you can find uh, uh, the tool sets recommendations for you to start uh, promoting your YouTube videos. So that brings us to the end of the session. Thank you so much. Thanks, uh, um, Rusa team, for giving us giving me this opportunity connect with a good set of listeners today. Thank you so much. Until we meet my again. Yeah. Thank you all. I'm dropping off from the session now. Read the form, please. Uh, respected organizer, um, feedback link, please. Yeah, yeah, Professor uh, Mohammed. Good evening, sir. Tell me, sir. Uh, feedback link, ma'am, please. Yeah, it, it 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 will be posted. I think I hope already posted by our organizing team. Sneha. Yes, ma'am. It has been posted in the Google Meet link, ma'am. We will post it. Uh, yeah, already Google. been posted, sir. They are very prompt in delivering the uh, services in terms of uh, uh, attendance and uh, feedback link, assignment link, everything. So we have four more days to go. Kindly uh, check with your chat box, please. Ma'am, uh, can it be shared again? I had some troubles. I will ask them to uh, do it again, sir. Right, ma'am. So that's why yesterday I told you everybody kindly cooperate and uh, uh, listen to the session and be interactive like that. But uh, one or two may be the technical issues. Now they will share you, sir. No issue. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think uh, interactive session is also over. And uh, any volunteer for any Mohammed, sir? Uh, what is your opinion regarding this session? And uh, is it possible for you to say a word of thanks for this session? 
of course ma'am yeah please uh from bangladesh time i mean for the last two and almost 15 minutes I'm yeah welcome sir from bangladesh yeah sir i want to know one thing from you and is there any digital marketing expert from bangladesh and what i have uh, i mean observed that okay there is a huge gap in bangladesh i mean we are uh. lacking behind and it's a, it, ah. it's a great opportunity for me to ah. learn from this session. I mean, actually, what's going on, how okay. social media can be used. Ah. Uh, I must say my gratitude to you, the organizer, and the presentation was excellent. Thanks, ma'am. Yes, sir. Yes, thank you, Elilarsi, madam, for your uh, deliberation. I thank all the participants and the Rusa team, uh, Ms. Neha and uh, Deva Shakti. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.